We're here today to try and determine if a few new technologies are merely fads or if they're rad innovations that can change healthcare communications as we know it. The codes and symbols in the presentation are active, so I encourage you to have fun with the presentation after the conference. Download it, fire up your webcam, use your smartphone, and have a little bit of fun. As humans, we use symbols to communicate. In 3200 BC, we had hieroglyphics representing the brain. Later, yin and yang represented the symbol of life. And today, we have prescription symbols, the AMA, and really, symbols are still at the core of our communications as human beings. In many cases, ideas are sparked outside of our own industry. In the mid-1990s, for example, the Japanese auto industry needed a more efficient system for tracking its parts getting the right parts to the right manufacturing facilities and into the right cars, thereby improving efficiency and quality. And so in 1994, Denso Wave invented the QR code to solve the problem. And marketers and phone companies got smart and figured out a way to direct users to websites, video, or sort up other content when the barcode image was snapped by the camera on their smartphone. Simply download a reader to your phone and you're good to go. So it's no surprise, really, that the readiness or the capability to read the codes is really at about 95% in Japan. It's at about 75% in Europe, and as we move west into the U.S., it's at about 45%. But it's accelerating and becoming mainstream. I mean, look around. They're in magazines, on billboards, in transit posters. They're everywhere, and there's no slowing down either. Codes are coming in all shapes and colors. Jessica Simpson has her own code. Mark Jacobs has added further color and funkiness, and Louis Vuitton even has their own with the Hallmark LV and other symbols from uh, their actual branding integrated into the code. Best Buy is also using QR codes to connect shoppers to mobile sites and offer select discounts. Cause Marketers leveraged Times Square recently to connect passionate people with a petition and a call to action from video uh, with celebs like Sandra Bullock and Peyton Manning all designed to drive people to sign up and restore the golf. And healthcare has also jumped on board. The OCF recently launched an HPV 16 program this year where QR codes were plastered all over the surfing venue uh, of uh, Surf City, at crosswalks, on t-shirts, driving young adults to the Have You Been Tagged campaign, simulating the viral spread of the disease and also reinforcing that you don't want to get tagged with this. You don't want oral cancer. And with the wheels in motion, imagine what we can do now. Patient take-one brochures can serve up video testimonials and grant access to resource centers. Shelf talkers can deliver copay coupons right to any patient's phone. And end caps can become virtual support centers, all without ever having to leave the store. Let's shift gears now and talk about the entertainment industry. In 1957, sights, sound, smell, and vibrations were combined to augment the movie experience. Video place was another concept where users could interact with virtual objects in 1975. And in 1990, augmented reality or virtual reality really came to its fruition where users could interact with virtual objects in our own world. Markers or glyphs are used to trigger the AR experience. And they can be black and white images, embroidery on sneakers, everything including baked goods. And when used while visiting a target website, the marker and the webcam trigger the experience to be in. But faces can also be recognized as markers. And in an interesting case, what you'll see here is you have an opportunity to transform and become an Autobot. But it's not just the entertainment industry breaking new ground. GE used a traditional glyph to trigger a wind farm animation, demonstrating its green energy capability and innovative thinking, as well as its commitment to the future. And imagine what we can do in the medical industry. Imagine being able to stand in front of your webcam and see exactly where all your anatomical parts are located, or applying rub-off markers to your arm to see how your bones and ligaments work, maybe even educating yourself as you prep for an orthopedic procedure, seeing where the incision is going to be made. So healthcare and e-patients are entering the fast lane. Bayer recently rolled out its Questable experience, where teenagers with hemophilia can find answers to questions they don't want to ask. GE and Total Immersion created an AR experience about cardiovascular disease, complete with full motion EKGs. But what if markers and QR codes were removed altogether? What if we lived in a world where actual objects could be recognized? Optical recognition, the technology of the future, is really right around the corner, and Google is a big part of it. Parts are already available, but it's not yet at full capacity. And you know what? We don't have to wait for Google. 
several other applications already exist where e-patients can leverage optical recognition. With SnapTel, for example, I can snap an image of a book cover, a DVD, a game, and immediately access online reviews. I can hook into Amazon. I can make a purchase all right from my smartphone. It's amazing. And Google Goggles, which I mentioned earlier, it's right around the corner. When at full capacity, goggles will allow you to point your phone at an object and have it immediately pull up information you'd ever want to know about it. Or snap a picture of your kids on vacation and pull up information about your exact location in the city, all or other relevant landmarks or areas of interest, places to eat. The possibilities are limitless. And optical recognition, it, it just doesn't end there. You're going to be able to point your phone at a car and get a test drive. You're going to be able to point your phone at a dinner sign and it'll trigger a menu. Dish Soap is going to reach out and talk to you with product reviews and coupon offers. And e-patients will be able to take full advantage. They'll be able to access OTC product information without ever opening the pack. They'll spill their pills out, point the phone at it, and know what medication to take and avoid medication errors. And they'll be able to access the most recent video footage at the hospital that they're visiting for a procedure. The applications for e-patients are limitless. So are QR codes, AR, and optical recognition just a fad, or are they rad? Well, they're actually both. These new innovations improve our quality of life and communication, but as new technologies come on board and evolve, they'll replace the old ones, and what we know now will become a fad. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoyed the presentation.